My name is Jay Murdoch. I've been in the coffee industry since 2005. Uh, it was a kind of a, a background move into coffee actually for me. I went to school for architecture and then after building elaborate wooden models, um, I kind of got burned out and so I visited my uncle who owns a coffee farm in Costa Rica and kind of learned about the process the back way. So I was eating coffee cherries before I was re regularly drinking coffee. Specialty coffee is obviously growing at an exponential rate, but the way I've described it to people for a long time is that it's kind of like it was a very small pool before, so the water level and quality level was very high, but what I'm seeing now is that the pool is getting very big and therefore it's getting very shallow. Specialty coffee is an expression of terroir, so the top 1% of the coffees in the world are really represent the specialty market. And so you're talking about coffees that are free of defects, that are consistent in screen size, and that are also um, shipped and well, exported at the proper moisture rate. So let's start with Pulp Natural because that, that one's probably the best to wrap your head around. And so it's common in Brazil, and what they do is when they pick the cherries, they have these large dryers that spin. And so they use heat to actually remove the cherry as it goes through mechanically. Um, washing coffee is typically where you take ripe cherries and you use lots and lots of water to wash them through channels and to eventually just kind of seed off the, the rest of the cherry. Uh, the natural process, or obviously the most traditional of processes uh, common in Ethiopia, is basically gathering all of the cherries, putting them on raised beds, and then rotating them over to control fermentation so that at the very end you can just, with your hands, pop out the coffee seeds. And then the honey process, which is probably the, I would say it's the newest and it's the most exciting for specialty coffee right now. Um, the honey process is where you use a, a mechanical husker to actually strip the cherry down and then they let the coffees, um, they, they spread them out on beds just like they would the natural process and they still have a little mucilage on them so they're a little sticky and so the sweetness soaks into the coffee bean and then they go through and they wash it off when they want to get the coffees ready for export. Everything's Arabica here for sure and what makes variety really special is that every coffee is a single origin so we don't blend any coffees. It's kind of like playing 3D chess for us so not only are we looking for the best coffees that we can find but also the right application. So if we, like we have a beautiful coffee from Guji in Ethiopia right now, that makes for a beautiful espresso. And then we have a different coffee from Ethiopia, which is perfect for our cold brew recipe. And so right now we carry coffees from Ethiopia, we have coffees from Colombia, Mexico, we have coffees inbound from Ecuador and Bolivia, we also get coffees from Guatemala, uh, we look at Costa Rican coffees, so, and Kenya, Kenyan coffees as well. Targeted development for sure is a huge thing. And so usually you hear people talk about the dark and light roasting, and really that means you've either gone too far or you haven't gone far enough. And so you're either gonna taste like the grassy components of the coffee or you're gonna taste the carbon components of the roast. So for us here, the, the main goals are to find that sweet spot and figure out how to bring more and more of it out as we roast. So because we use Cropster, which gives us endless amount of data, data analytics in terms of roasting coffee. We know how aggressive to be in terms of drying the coffee out during the roast. And then we also can really target the caramelization levels that we want in the development times for the, for the completion of the roast. Most of the time roasteries are set up in warehouse spaces and they're not really open to the public. The beauty of this shop and roasting in the shop is that it gives us a direct relationship to our customers. So the customers being literally 10 feet away from, the retail boxes are 10 feet away from where the coffee is roasted. It helps our sales tremendously here in terms of retail. But it also gives us a lot of exposure because I, I do public cuppings here on Saturdays um, and it's, it's just a great tool um, to explain to people exactly what we do with coffee. Um, well, I guess from the, the question earlier, I said it's uh, the pool's getting bigger, but the water level is getting lower. And so what I would like to see happen is a return to people just focusing on quality control. Um, you know, it's great that so many people want to get into the coffee industry, but I don't want to dilute the quality at all. And so maintaining 
the, the specialty standards that are, you know, coming around. But like the best and brightest part of the future of coffee is future micro lot development, especially in places like Tolima and Colombia, like regions that we really couldn't get into before and finding, you know, coffees with their own unique flavor profile that are unbelievable on the cupping table.